Christine Miller of Two Chicks Walking Tours in New Orleans, and this is Quarantine History. From a rare luxury served by the slice to a welcome gift for immigrants entering through Ellis Island in the early 1900s to the most widely consumed fruit in America, the banana's rise to superstardom is thanks in large part to the banana man of New Orleans, Sam Zamari. He arrived in 1891 from Russia. Sent here as a kid to make money for family back home. On the docks, he watched crews sort imported bananas. The green ones went on the good pile. Those with a single freckle went in the turning pile. And the bad ones, those that wouldn't survive the long transport to market, were essentially trashed. Sam got a million dollar idea. He hopped on a boxcar and telegraphing ahead, sped those ripe bananas to shopkeepers along the rail line who pick up the fruit at the platform. In 1899, he sold 20,000 bananas, but soon Sam would sell much, much more. He formed Cayumel Fruit Company. He bought steamships and built plantations on thousands of acres in Honduras. Sam became a major power broker there. When his Honduras business came under threat, he hired two mercenaries, Machine Gun Maloney and Lee Christmas. He smuggled them into the country on Cayumel ships along with some high-tech weapons and overthrew Honduras's elected government installing a leader that gave Cayumel huge tax breaks and tracts of land. It was one of the original banana republics. The CIA took notes on the operation and employed those same tactics elsewhere in the region. In 1930, Sam made 30 million when he sold a controlling interest in Cayumel to the rival United Fruit Company. A few years later, when the merged United Fruit was tanking, Sam's suggestions and his accent were mocked in the company's Boston boardroom. I can't understand a word of what you say. He returned with enough proxies to take control of the company. You're all fired. Do you understand that? He said. He turned the company around in 90 days and moved the headquarters to his adopted home of New Orleans. The ornate facade of the United Fruit Company's New Orleans home is still visible in the CBD. And Zamari's Ottoman Place mansion was left to Tulane University. Where are that? I-